Hi, I'm Mary Perry, and welcome to The Wellness Zone. Today, I'm here with Dr. Barry Sears. Dr. Sears, thanks for being with me. Always a pleasure, Mary. So today, Dr. Sears, we're going to talk metabolism and metabolic engineering. So let's first start with an overview. When we say the word metabolism, a lot of people are thinking it's more about weight loss and, you know, your ability to burn fat faster. But what exactly is metabolism? Because it goes well beyond that. Well, uh, metabolism can be summed up on one very easy phrase. It keeps us alive. So that's a good start. Oh, how can I support that statement? Metabolism does convert the food we eat into energy. It also controls our immune system. It controls turning on and turning off inflammation. It controls the expression of our genes. It controls our rate of aging. That's a pretty impressive list from this metabolism. And yet mm -hmm. people say, I know nothing about it other than say, I'm getting fat, my metabolism is slow. Right. Well, they're, they're right. They're getting fat because your metabolism is not slow, it's inefficient. It's no longer in the zone. And so this is where I started out many years ago, looking at food as if it were a drug, finding really uh, the appropriate uh, format for each individual that allows them to keep their metabolism in that zone. And what's the payoff? A longer and better life. Oh, of course, yes, I will lose fat faster too. A couple bonuses there. So, so let's, let's break this down a little bit further. So when you're talking about metabolic engineering, what does that mean? Well, let's say happens your car doesn't work very well. You take it into an automotive engineer. He's also known as the mechanic. He does right. a little twist here, twist there, and all of a sudden the car is working fine. Likewise, if your metabolism is inefficient, you need to do some metabolic engineering. Does that mean taking a drug? No. It means adjusting your diet until basically that car, in this case our metabolism, is working like a Maserati at peak efficiency. And so when we say we have to work on the diet, what does that look like? Well, look at the things that basically make a metabolism inefficient. Number one, eating too many calories. What happens when you eat too many calories? Gain weight. <laughs> you, no, you gain fat. And <laughs> it's the fat basically becomes an inflammatory mediator that disrupts metabolism. So again, eating too many calories can basically cause your metabolism to become less efficient. Likewise, you can basically have too many of the wrong things coming in there, like white carbohydrates, like white rice, white pasta, white bread, white potatoes. And you can also have basically uh, too many other things, such as too many omega-6 fatty acids or too many saturated fatty acids like palmitic acid. All of these will basically cause your metabolism to become less efficient and basically slow down or basically increase the aging process, fat gain being usually the first stage. But as they say in infomercials, but there's more. <laughs> also, there are things that should be in your diet, which are not in the typical American diet in sufficient levels. These will include omega-3 fatty acids and polyphenols. Polyphenols are the chemicals that give fruits and vegetables their color. And finally, the last thing, a wrong balance of protein to carbohydrate in the diet. So let's, again, we're going back to use our car analogy. I need basically the right balance of gas and air to get the best mileage for my car. I also need the right balance of protein to carbohydrate to get the best hormonal mileage for my car. So in a nutshell, that's what basically metabolism is. What metabolic engineering does is it goes in and using the blood, readjust those aspects for your biochemistry, for your genetics, so you can maintain peak metabolic efficiency at every stage of your life. And if you can do that, the end result is you will live longer and you will live better. Right. And who doesn't want that? So just to recap, Dr. Sears, we're talking about not having excess calories because you don't want to have excess body fat. We're talking about having enough protein and carbohydrates. So you need the right macronutrient balance. And then the types of omega-3s, uh, obviously more omega-3s compared to omega-6s, and then polyphenols. Did I get all the four things we just said? You did. And all some people are saying, <laughs> my God, my head is exploding. So many things to do. I've got to watch CNN. I've got to basically go out and play pickleball saying, See, it's not that hard, but the fact is, these are the rules you have to, if you want to basically squeeze all you want out of life, mm -hmm. squeeze all you want out of your metabolism, the basic rules are actually quite simple, but you have to follow them. Mm -hmm. There's no basically get out of, get out of jail for free card. Now, if you don't, what are you going to look at? 
a lifetime of earlier development of chronic disease. They say, I'm too busy. I'll have Merck Sharp and Dome save me for myself. I'm sure they have a drug that'll make my life easier. Uh, basically, fool's paradise. The reason you're taking the drug is because your metabolism has been disrupted by your diet, and the drug is treating only the symptoms of the chronic disease. It's not treating the underlying cause, which is basically a disrupted metabolism. Okay. So could we do a day overview of what this would look like in terms of the right num number of calories, kind of the macronutrient balance, the ideal amount of the omega-3s and the polys? Can you walk, walk people through a sample day of what this looks like? Because it's not as hard when you look at it. It seems like a lot when you're talking about it, but it's not that bad when you actually put it into motion. Let's break it down to one, two, three. Step one, get 30 grams of protein at every meal. Mm -hmm. Now, what's 30 grams of protein? The amount you can put on the palm of your hand. Yes, four to five but ounces or so. Not more, but not less. Mm -hmm. Now, why? Because protein is required to send signals from the gut to the brain to say, stop eating. So if I don't eat enough protein at a meal. Guess what? The brain says, I'm still hungry. And all of a sudden, a couple of hours later, I'm, you know, start eating again. Good idea. I'll just eat lots of protein all day long. It doesn't work that way. If you eat too much protein, you're now basically sending different signals to the brain to start eating again. So again, about 30 grams at every meal. Dinner, that's easy. Lunch, a little tougher. Breakfast, impossible. But this is what your goal is. Say, if I want to be, have freedom from hunger, to cut down the number one cause of an inefficient metabolism, then I have to basically have 30 grams of protein at every meal. Okay, step two. I need some carbohydrates to balance off. Uh, the fallacy is saying, oh, carbohydrates make me fat. Come on, you're g give me a break. You know, no, you need carbohydrates. And brain needs them particularly. The brain is a glucose hog. It accounts for 2% of the weight of our body, yet it eats up and basically consumes 20% of the energy. And all that has to come from glucose being burned for energy. So you need to have enough carbohydrates in the diet to keep the brain happy. How much? Well, if you have 30 grams of protein, that's about 40 grams of carbohydrate. Now, but the type of carbohydrate matters. And what are the best carbohydrates? Non-starchy vegetables, just like your grandmother told you, just like you've told all of your clients and, and patients over the years, you've got to eat your non-starchy yeah. vegetables. Why? One, it's hard to overconsume them. True. Two, they contain fiber. Now, what does fiber do? Well, it turns out fiber does a lot. It basically is metabolized by the microbes in our gut to make signaling agents that make the protein even more effective in shutting down hunger. Now, last step, number three, you need some fat. People say, great, I, how much? The answer is a dash. Oh, I want to eat more fat. The answer is a dash. But not just a fat, the right type of fat. Monounsaturated fats, things like extra virgin olive oil, things such as nuts, things such as uh, guacamole. Yeah. Okay, well, how much extra virgin olive oil? Maybe a tablespoon, and you've done it. There's all the rules you need to follow for a lifetime to basically tune up your metabolism by metabolic engineering. And Dr. Sears, just to go over this again, because you touched on it, tell everybody again, really what the benefits are. It's not just about losing excess body fat. There's so many other benefits of following this for a lifetime. Well, the number one, you slow down aging. Do I have to go any further? No. No. <laughs> 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 you, know, you can talk about, say, I'm, I, yeah, I want to slow down aging. And that's something that happens at every age. Uh, but you, the primary cause of you know, aging is a disrupted metabolism. You have the ability to turn it around very quickly. And what does the clinical data tell us? How long does it take following the, the simple one, two, three method I talked about to turn your metabolism around? Four days. Four days. That's <laughs> great news. Here's the bad news. How long does it take for the metabolism to become inefficient again? Not Four days. long. <laughs> so, so you say, I mean, I have to follow this for a lifetime. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Unless you want to basically be taking drugs for a lifetime to clean up the damage, the symptoms caused by your inability to basically control your metabolism. And if you are taking drugs for chronic diseases, then the more you follow metabolic engineering, the less drugs you need to treat the symptoms. Who wouldn't want that? 
Oh, the, dr the drug companies don't want that. But everybody else <laughs> wants that. Yes. Well, this has been very enlightening, Dr. Sears. Thanks for walking us through metabolism, how to actually follow the eating program, and really what you can expect as the long-term benefits of continuing to do this on a day-in and day-out basis. So we always appreciate your time. Thank you very much. For more on this subject and many other topics on the science of wellness, go to drsears.com.